you. And today we're continuing. Uh, so Dr. Huang Guilong, uh, born in Taiwan, raised and graduated uh, in medicine in Brazil, a specialist in infectious and parasitic disease, a general practitioner and parenteral and enteral medical nutrition therapist, uh, once in large of the hospital infection control service of the city of Franca's General Hospital. She was responsible for the control of all prescribed antimicrobial medication and received an award for the best paper presented at the Brazilian Hospital Infection Control Congress in 1998. Since 1997, she has been presenting her work worldwide, working with the approach and treatment of all diseases of all system of the human body in a holistic way, with treatment guided through the teaching of traditional Chinese medicine and Hippocrates. So uh, thank you, Dr. Huang, uh, for joining us today. She would present her talk on how can we reduce hospital infections in pediatric patients. Can you hear me now? Yes, doctor, we can hear you. Yes, okay, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. My name is Juan Weiling, I am a medical doctor from Brazil. I'm very happy to be here today and thank you for the introduction. Uh, my, um, the theme I will present today is how can we reduce hospital infections in pediatric pediatrics patients. Um, let me see. Okay. Hospital infection is one of the main problems related to public health due to the high rate of morbidity and mortality in addition to the high costs, especially in pediatric units. More than 20% of the nosocomial infections occur in pediatric wards. Fever is a psychological response when there is an increase in body's temperature above the normal daily variation and corresponds to about 15 to 25% of the children's consultations in emergency service. And the most common cause of fever in children are infections, non infectious causes, including immune mediated inflammatory and neoplastic condition. Consider the high rates of the children who get nosocomial infection. Today, I come to bring alternative for the prevention and treatment of nosocomial infection in children, showing the point of view of the traditional Chinese medicine following what Hippocrates said that it's important to consider other ancient medical traditions prior to the knowledge we have nowadays. We know that uh, hospital infection control programs now, they can control only one third of hospital infections and two thirds is still not controlled. And that's why we need to put together knowledge from other ancient medical traditions to try to explain these two thirds hospital infection that still not controls. According to traditional Chinese medicine, fever is caused by the invasion of the external pathogenic factor, such as wind, cold, heat, dryness, and humidity. Uh, and uh, this is usually not considered by the Western medicine point of view. And that is why this is the main point of my presentation today. To illustrate this presentation, I will show you two case reports. The first is a girl born in 2003. She was born at, um, uh, after midnight and her first bath was um, next in an open window. And when she arrived at her mother's room, her nose was running which made her first feeding difficulty. This uh, running nose was because of the invasion of these external pathogenic factors. 
and not, uh, not caused by the virus because we're asymptomatic and they're saying that the runny nose is caused by the virus. But in Chinese medicine, runny nose is caused by the invasion of the external pathogenic factors. In this case was wind and cold. And the mother started to protect her, her daughter from the cold and wind and keep, keeping her warm and with the windows closed and the girls had no problems after. And the second case was a boy, three years old boy who went to the hospital due to knee pain and fever. And the orthopedic said that it was infection in the knee and drain at the area and the boy started taking intravenous antibiotics. As the fever do, did not pass, we remained in the hospital and his grandmother who was already my patient called to me and asked what she could do to make her boy better since the antibiotics were not managing to control the infection and the fever. And he was being taken care of by another doctor. I, uh, I, I orientate her only to uh, avoid cold water, to avoid the entrance of coldness in the side, inside the body of the patients, and to avoid raw food because raw food all ha has cold energy to avoid the dairy products because dairy products can induce the production of secretion in the area of the knee and the close the windows, uh, especially in the night when he's sleeping and uh, always uh, dry the hair after, after um, after he, he uh, um, take bath and uh, doesn't, uh, do not walk barefoot. And what he, uh, after this orientation, he, his fever went down and he, uh, he went home and he, his infection was, uh, was, was, uh, um, yeah, was cured. And this is, was the Chinese dietary counseling that I did avoiding dairy products, raw food and cold water. And um, ah, these are, are the recommendation, the bathroom window closet when he was uh, taking bath, uh, keeping the hair wet after bathing and do not walk barefoot and wearing thin clothes to cover his body to do not allow the entrance of the external pathogenic factors that is cold and wind. Usually these, these children are weak in energy. That is why it's very important to orientate these um, uh, all these uh, guidelines to avoid the entrance of this cold and wind. Because normally when the children has fever, they usually begin to introduce other antibiotics. And this medication can induce uh, weakness in the body and leading to more infection after. And that is why you need, you need to know that these factors could induce fever and only doing this orientation, you, you can not do, uh, give more antibiotics and reduce co uh, complications. These are the tree-like figure that I usually uh, show in all my presentations. These tree symbolize the human body and uh, this tree uh, um, has a trunk with several branches. Each branch represents one medical specialty. And uh, coming out of each branch, you can see many leaves. And in this hospital infection is a branch of uh, infectology. Or an, and in this case is an infection in orthopedic uh, specialty, but uh, this infection in the knee is treated by Western medicine in the leaf level. And what I'm trying to show you that the 
all the problems in Chinese medicine is under the earth that is in the root, that is the imbalance between the five elements and yang yang energy, and also the invasion of the external pathogenic factors that they usually do not understand that these factors could induce the formation of the disease. And that is why when the patient has some symptoms of hospital infection in the leaf level, you need to uh, avoid, orientate the patient to avoid these external pathogenic factors and also try to balance these um, uh, weak energy state that in, inducing the formation of this infection in the leaf lab. Uh, normally, the human body has the capacity to resist different pathogenic factors and to maintain a relative balance inside the body and between it and the outside the world. And this ability to resist is called the zenki, that is the uh, energy in the kidney and or the second chakra, that's the ability to the body to resist this pathogen. In the traditional Chinese medicine refers all pathogenic factors as malicious shiki. And here is the balance state that when the Zen Qi the protect the energy of the patient is high and the shiki is lower, the, the patient will fight and will not have this disease. But when this disease, uh, the patient's protection is lower and the shaky is higher, he will be sick. And this is the condition nowadays in SARS-CoV-2 that the zinki of our patients are, are all, all low. In another study that I did that the protection of the, the majority of the population in the world is lower because of the influence of the electromagnetic waves nowadays that is leading to this uh, low zenki. And it is important to avoid the exposition to wind and to turn off all the fans and air conditioning in the hospital because this is an important factor to generate uh, hospital infection, uh, mainly respiratory tract infections and to close windows, especially in the night, avoiding getting wet hair, walking barefoot, covering yourself and damp clothes should be changed constantly. And also to change it to, if it's possible, to do not allow to drink cow's milk and all dairy products because dairy products can induce the formation of secretion inside the body and um, increasing the chances of, because secretion, uh, Western doctors understand that could be the beginning of some infection. And they usually, uh, they usually introduce antibiotics to treat the secretion. And that is why when you take out dairy products and all and uh, cause milk and all dairy products, you can re reduce the production of secretion without uh, using antibiotics. And also to do not allow the ingestion of cold water because cold water inside the body can induce the formation of internal heat. That is the energy imbalances leading to hyperemia symptoms and uh, symptoms of infections. And always uh, do not uh, reduce the consumption of these kinds of foods that you are heating in this microwave and this system because they take out all the energy inside the food and the food that you are eating is not, uh, do not have any energy. And this kind of food that is, heat, uh, that is made by this air fryer also has uh, uh, energy alterations here. And it's the more propensity to have more uh, hospital infection too. And this is a research that I did in Brazil from 2015 to 2020, showing that uh, the measuring a thousand chakras energy in a thousand patients. But uh, this is a research that I did in uh, analyzing 409 files of my patients. 
and all uh, patients from children and older patients, uh, analyzing the chakras energy from one to seven. One is the liver, second is the kidney, third is the heart, fourth is the lung, fifteen is the spleen. All age groups from and all the chakras were in the lowest level of energy. Only the seven chakra, that is the spiritual chakra, is normal. This means that the majority of the this is a sample that I think it is happening in all the population in the world because of the influence of the electromagnetic waves. And in another presentation that I did in another nursing conference, that they show that the majority of the patient that we are admitting in the hospital is immunocompromised. Even they do not have, they are not taking immune, um, immune suppressive medications. Um, even if they do not have diabetes or cancer or have another, uh, taking another medication that immunosuppressive, because even this patient, they have normal diagnosis such as anxiety, depression, headache, knee pain, all of them has energy deficiency. This means that the majority, because energy means immune system, in traditional Chinese medicine. And energy, if all of them are in the lowest level, all the organs are not working properly to produce energy adequately and to protect the body against this invasion. And that's why we are facing this uh, pandemic now because the majority of our patients are weak. And here is to show you that the use of high concentrated, should, uh, high concentrated medication inside the hospital is very important to show you that in these patients that are in the lowest level of energy, when you use high concentrated medication, you, you, you will reduce even more the vital energy leading to more complications. The body of the patient will will be weaker and will produce more internal heat that is the energy leading to hospital infection in the leaf level of the tree. And that is why it's better to use high diluted medication nowadays to improve the energy of our patients and to improve their immunity and reduce the formation of internal heat that is the energy imbalances in the root of that tree that is causing the infection symptoms in the leaf level. Here's to show you that to control adequately and completely hospital infection, it's very important to have the two medicine minds, Western and traditional Chinese medicine, one treating the leaf level, another treating the root level and considering the external pathogenic factors that is causing the whole process of infection, hospital infection others. And the conclusion of this study is that in pediatric patients, it's very important to consider the influence of diet and the entrance of the external pathogenic factors as inducers of hospital infections. And these orientations and control of the entrance of these factors inside the body of the patient is crucial for controlling the symptoms of hospital infection. According to Hippocrates, natural forces within us are the true healers of the disease. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, I will be very happy to answer it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wong, for this wonderful presentation. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, okay, Dr. Wong, I would like to address this question to you. How much of those uh, factors that we spoke of, whether it's environmental factors that we can control as the temperature, the ventilation, and the diet are actually applied in hospital settings and do actually are effective in reducing pediatric infections? Or are yes, they applied only in clinics? Excuse me. Uh, because nowadays what uh, they are using to control hospital infection, washing hands and do the, yes. all this sterilization 
these can control only one third of the cause per infection. And the two thirds, they still not know what can be causing this hospital infection. I think this, to know these is energy status of our patients, that our patients is low in energy. And if you, uh, because we need to study each patient individually, each patient has energy imbalances that is their own energy imbalances. And if you, uh, you need to study each individual uh, uh, separ separately and also um, reduce the use of this uh, high concentrated medication that is causing weakness in their immune system, in the, the energy leading to weakness state and leading to formation of internal kit that is the energy leading to this manifestation in the leaf level. And this infection is caused by these energy imbalances. And I have so many publications nowadays showing that uh, the majority of the hospital infections I can treat without using antibiotics, only using these energy balances state, only changing the diet and uh, orientate the patient to avoid the disease of the external pathogenic factors. And if you reduce the use of high concentrated medication, you will uh, strengthen the immune system of the patient. And uh, using their own immune system, they will we will balance the energy and we will cure this infection without using antibiotics. There's so many articles that I published only showing that all these infections has energy imbalances in the background, in the root of that tree that I showed that we need to treat the root and not only the symptom. The symptom is the infection, but the infection is caused by the imbalance in the root of the tree and the, the influence of the external pathogenic factors. That is why Hippocrates said that natural forces within us are the true healers of the disease, that the natural forces, we have our energy to fight, but we need to balance uh, balance this energy and to regulate our energy to cure the disease that is in the leaf level. That's only the symptom. It's not the disease itself. The disease is deeper and you need to treat the deeper level to try to don't use this medication because the use of the medication in the leaf level is causing the imbalance even more the root and that is why that is, uh, we have so many infections nowadays that's not controlled, but it is because we are not uh, treating the root and not, uh, only treating the leaf. That is why I'm showing the importance to treat the root that we usually not treat nowadays. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for this valuable information. And thank you for, uh, for presenting today. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Okay, so uh, I guess we can move to our next speaker.